uh, one minute crash course to Mini Canon. If you want to learn more, there's a book called The Reason Schemer. Um, so this is what the general interface looks like. You can ask Mini Canon to give you back all the answers for a variable Q, where Q is unified with the number 5. It says, OK, it's just 5. You can say, OK, Q can be either the list or the pair 1, 2, or it could be the symbol A. You get back what you expect. And finally, you can introduce new variables. Uh, and you can say that Q is this fresh variable x, or it is 6. And you get, well, Q can be anything, or Q can be 6. OK, so that is your mini Canon primer. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to the kinds of constraints that you're going to encounter if you, uh, if you uh, start using C Canon. Um, so you can use finite domain constraints, uh, which are an improvement over what you can do in uh, mini Canon, because in mini Canon you basically have to say x can be 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, and just enumerate all the possibilities. So in C Canon you have things like finite domain constraints, where you can say that x and y are in the range of uh, 0 to 10, and that x uh, plus 5 is y. Uh, and so um, C Canon gives you out, well, all the things that add uh, are 5 apart in 0 through 10. You can also uh, use these template constraints, which say that use the variable x as a template for y. And you can later say that x is this lambda term with z as a uh, fresh variable in there. Um, and so you get out what you expect for x. It's this lambda term where this argument is z right here. But this y isn't tied to x in any, or z in any way. Um, and this shows that uh, C Canon kind of maintains the declarativeness of uh, mini Canon, where you can say your constraints in any order, and it'll figure it out. I don't have to say first what x is, and then say that x is a template for y. I can do it in any order that I want. Um, and this is not the whole list of constraints, but I don't have time to go into all of them. Uh, C Canon also shifts with set constraints, disequality constraints. So you can say that x is not equal to something, uh, also attributes, and uh, nominal uh, logic. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus more on extending C Canon to do whatever constraints you want it to do. Um, so you can uh, write your own constraints in C Canon. And I'm going to show you an example where you can just hide stateful aspects of your program by using constraints. So in this example, uh, we have basically Northeastern University has faculty. They have PhD students and lab computers. And they all interact with printers. And we want the faculty members to be able to have some permissions that are different than what the PhD students and the, uh, the lab computers can do. Um, so we want to classify the permissions of these computers as being able to print, being able to remove your own print jobs, and being able to control all of the print jobs on the print queue. Um, so given that sometimes the machine moves from one place to a different place, we need to write some script or something like that that ensures that when we move uh, a, a machine from a higher uh, permission location to a lower permission location, that the correct permissions are removed. Um, so we're going to express this with custom constraints within C Canon. Um, so we can express the current uh, permissions of a machine with constraints. They look like this. So P is the uh, constraint that says this machine has this print permission. And then we have a constraint that says it doesn't have this print condition. Um, the keywords just mean that it's unique. We only have to keep track of one copy of this constraint in store. And it's persistent. That means it's not going to go away unless we tell it to go away. Um, so like I said before, we want faculty machines to have all the permissions. We want PhD machines not to be able to mess with the queues of other PhD machines. We want lab machines that only have permission to, to print. right? So if I were going to define um, a function that kind of describes what faculty machines can do, I would say, well, this faculty location can have any number of machines. And it returns a constraint that says, uh, for all the machines, and as you can see, I can use whatever racket code I want to in the body. I have this fold that says I'm going to accumulate all of the uh, constraints that I need to add up to, uh, to make these machines have the right permissions. So I'm adding P and Q and R uh, to all the machines that are coming in as faculty machines. And I need another constraint that says I've removed uh, a permission from uh, a machine. And I actually want to see it in my answer. And that's what this uh, reified keyword means. So at the end, I'm going to expect to see a bunch of remove constraints that say these are all the, the permissions that need to be removed from these machines. And so I'm going to define how these constraints interact 
with something called constraint interactions. And so this says if I have a print and then I take away print, I have removed print. And this says if I have a print and I have previously removed print, well, I have print again. And so that's all great and that's fine, but I'm only defining one thing. I'm only defining faculty and I'm only defining printing. And we're in a language with metaprogramming, so instead of defining all of those, I'm just going to write a macro to do it. And this is one of the powerful, uh, the powerful features you get because ckanon is embedded in Racket. So I have defined a macro that will, given a list of names of locations and the permissions they should have, generate all the code that I need to, to have my constraints. And similarly, uh, if I have permissions, like positive and negative uh, permissions, I can say, well, I have this positive constraint and this negative constraint, and then I define those create, uh, these uh, define constraint interactions uh, inside of there. So this is all abstracted over the permissions. So I'm able to kind of collapse my code into this. I have these permissions with the positive and negative permissions, and then I have these locations that should have these uh, permissions. So at the end, we can run these constraints, which basically just says, I only care about the constraints at the end. And I have these four machines. I have M1, M2, M3, M4. The first two are faculty machines. The second is a PhD machine. And the fourth is, or the third is a PhD machine, and the fourth is a lab machine. And so while I'm running my program, I move the PhD, uh, the faculty uh, machine to a PhD location. And then I move a faculty machine to a lab location. And then ckanon spits out remove Q from M1, remove Q from M2, and remove R from M2. And that's what we expect. So I want to stress that uh, what you see at the end, this S expression at the end that says, you know, remove these constraints, that could be whatever you want it to be. Uh, right now it just spits out an S expression, but it could uh, spit out uh, the code that would actually remove those permissions. Or it could actually call the FFI while reifying the constraint and actually remove those permissions. You can embed whatever racket code you want inside of, inside of uh, these constraints. So that gives you a lot of power. So uh, in conclusion, I've tried to touch on all the things that I think you uh, need to know about ckanon. It maintains this declarative aspect of your programs where you can reorder some goals and not lose uh, any power. Uh, it introduces non-determinism. Uh, it's also faster to use constraints like in that at the finite domain example. Um, and you can extend it uh, with your own new constraints and uh, interactions between those constraints. So if you want to learn more, uh, the code is up on GitHub. I'm a little bit of a liar because it's not all up there yet. Not all the things that I've demoed in this presentation are up, but most of them are there. Um, and you can email me. Um, and if you want to learn more about logic programming in general, please visit minicanon.org. Yeah, I mean, it's basically as meaningful as you restrict yourself to. So if you're worried about uh, interacting with one of the constraint libraries that ckanon ships with, you can, you're pretty, you have a guarantee that those constraints are not doing anything weird. But if you import some random constraint from some user program, I mean, you basically have to use the same, uh, you have to be as careful as you would uh, importing random code, okay? Thank you.